I'm not in post-production, so I have no idea. I do all my recording and editing myself. I am a one-man show. So give me a little bit of credit, okay? I'm just one guy. That being said, I cover prize picks, Thrive Fantasy, Sleeper, underdog all of it folks and DraftKings soon to come i will make you a better fantasy sports player by giving you the tools that you need to have in your toolbox so you can crush fantasy sport hence the name captain crush i lead the ship and you will crush so i got this new light up here trying to get my setup a little bit more professional it's blinding the heck out of me i can barely see so bear with me if you see that light on my glasses i got a green screen coming i'm gonna have a better setup so you'll be able to see this beautiful face some would argue that it's an ugly face a little bit better and bigger coming soon okay let's go over to sleeper okay and I want to talk about sleeper today yesterday I gave you a two-man Dylan cease as in cease strikeouts we had 10 K's over six and a half it hit but unfortunately I paired it with strider less nine and a half K's I want to talk about strider I had him more at nine and nine K's but under nine and a half why because I projected him to get nine so if he did happen to get ten I would win the over bet and push, but I could still win both bets. And that is critical. It's line shopping. I want you guys to do that. Strider was the sweat. It came down to the final out. My whole discord was sweating. I was covered in sweat. Half was on one side, half was on the other. But in the end, my sleeper slip chalk. It happened, but we move on. Today, I got another two man cooked up for you, but I have a list of four that I like. All right. First, Taj Bradley, less five and a half strikeouts. It's still five and a half on sleeper. They bumped it down to five on prize picks. I got that in early, thankfully. I also like Shohei Hotani more half a hit. I really like it. He's been crushing. I think he's going to do good. If you want to take Ella De La Cruz over half a hit too and ride the rook train, you absolutely can. And I'm going to give my boy, my my illegitimate son, Wana, a shout out and take his Blackburn more four and a half strikeouts. That's right. That came from Wana. I'm including it in the mix. I like it. I tailed it myself. And the last one that I like would be Mr. Tyler Wells, more five and a half strikeouts. I believe it's the pickles play of the day, which makes it crazy that I'm even going to mention it, but I had it before the pickle was on it. Let's hope that pickle doesn't pick the wrong play. My God in heaven, I'm begging you, please pickle, get this one right. That is my sleeper plays today. I'll post them up here for you. Remember, use code crush, get yourself that hundred percent deposit match. But more importantly than that, the cap in me, I, him, will give you 30 days free into my Discord where I teach and preach and you crush. It's that simple. And now for the prize picks faithful, it's Taco Tuesday, everybody. As LeBron James would say, Taco Tuesday. Yes, sir. Here we are, the king of the road, prize picks. We got K's. I've seen a lot of talk about this, okay? Let me tell you guys something about these here tacos. Anyone doing this on a remote high level, good level even, I would even go down to say a mid level anyone with a mid comprehension of sports fantasy sports handicap whatever you want to call it whatever you want to say it is okay at the end of the day you're getting a huge discount which takes these 50 50s and gives it into our favor sometimes as low as 60 percent sometimes as high as 70 percent the point is if you take it on an infinite timeline you will be on the winning side way more often than the losing side does that mean that you're never going to lose taking a taco absolutely not of course you can lose taking a taco if you win seven out of ten times, you're still going to lose three out of ten times. My point is this. You take every taco more. If you don't want to take the taco, just fade it. But never, ever, never, ever take under. Or I will be very, very upset. And you don't want to upset Captain Crush. Okay? So, more on the taco. Obviously, whichever tacos drop, you take more. Again, I just gave you the reasoning behind that. You don't even need to go into any analysis on this, folks. I literally just skipped all of that for you. Why? Because because you automatically know it's a 60% chance to hit at least. What else do you need? If you're going to be facing any casino, any house, and they're giving you a 60% chance to hit in your favor, you take it and you put as much as you can on it, okay? Trust me, prize picks and casinos are smarter than you and I. That's why they limit the betting to 25 unless you're a platinum member, you can go more. But tacos, Tuesdays, crush them. But now what you've all been waiting for, the WNBA, Women's National Basketball Basketball Association. My oh my. Yesterday we had one game and it's safe to say if you took the 10 minutes, I know it was a long video yesterday, but if you took the 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever it was and watched it start to finish, there's zero way that you didn't crush. And I know 
know people crushed because I got the DMs and the receipts to prove it. All right. Yesterday I was on point. I had maybe one or two that missed that I was that I was high on, which Asia Wilson's block and steals. Asia Wilson. I even said that up front. I faded the rest of her. I liked her under, but again, she had one of those sick games. It happens. She had six blocks and steals, folks. That's literally 18 fantasy points right there. I mean, what are you gonna do? Six blocks and steals? It is what it is. We move on. Today I want to talk about the girls, the Connecticut and New York Liberty. Folk, this, these are two of the top teams that can contend for Las Vegas Aces title. Okay. These are the two only two teams that I see that are making a run at that title, at that chance to win. So you already know we're gonna be targeting this game somewhat. We have Brianna Jones is out, so I automatically know that Dewana Bonner, she's 18 real points on underdog, which by the way, I will have an underdog cook up for you guys at the end of this stream. But Dewana Bonner, 18 and a half real points. Her role has increased as of late because Jones is no more. You can see 26 points last game. She had a stinker 11, 20, 20, 20. Her floor is basically 15 on any given night. And her ceiling is probably about eh, 25, but she's going to be anywhere between those range of outcomes normally 15 to 25. I think 18 and a half is still a little bit too low. Again, underdog has her at 18. That is value. You get rid of that hook and now you have push equity. So if you get it over on underdog, I like it, which I believe it's in my underdog cookup. I will have to wait and see, but that's what I wanted to talk about. Dewana Bonner. I'm staying away from her other fantasy score. I'm just going to be targeting her player points. And again, I'm not that high on this particular one, but this is, I tell you guys everything that I'm targeting. Brianna Stewart, 22 and a half real points. Okay. Some call her the Joker of WNBA, the do it all or the Luka Doncic. I'm sorry. The Luka of the WNBA. 18, 13, 28, 12, 32. She has a low, low floor. How low can you go? But she has an amazingly high ceiling. I am hoping that she gets up for this game, wants to crush because it should be a competitive game. 22 and a half points. This is the lowest I've seen it. If you wanted to take more here, I wouldn't tell you not to. I just wanted to talk about that because I know that it's a, a deflated line and I am Captain Crush and I buy low and I sell high. Let me tell you right now, if I see someone's line at 25 yesterday, 25 the day before, whatever, and it moves down all the way to 22 and a half, you will see me taking more as long as the rest of the research checks out. I just wanted to cover those two because they're going to be popular plays today, and that is that, okay? Scrolling down here to Kayla McBride, 11 and a half points. I believe I got her in today at 11. You could still take it at 11 and a half. It's not terrible. Again, this should be a decent close matchup. I'm not 100% sure. Ezzy Magabor, if you want to look at her 14 and a half real points, you could. Both of these would be in play and a nice little run back 1v1, which you all know I like those, okay? Miss Arike Angumbawale. She's been putting up stinker after stinker. That should signal in your head. Look at this. Red, red, red. 41-point game against Seattle. Phoenix, they just got rid of their coach. They're not a good team. They're terrible, okay? For obvious reasons. I won't go into it. But the point is, is that Arike can put up 25 to 30 real points in a New York minute, okay? She absolutely can get over this line. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do here yet uh i could see this game being a blowout to be honest with you 21 and a half real points for someone with a 40 point ceiling is just a little bit too low i'm not exactly sure what i'm going to do there if you wanted to target her fantasy points dead you could i just want to target the main plays the popular plays my goal here is to cover the big names that people are going to be talking about and i look at twitter i look at other p uh, content creators to see who they're talking about before i make these videos so i can give my two cents on it if you want to say oh captain you're targeting it no i'm not I'm just going over each individual player that needs to be discussed. People that are taking this seriously need to know this stuff. They want to know what's up, what's up with the line. So I give it to them, okay? That's what this is about, okay? Let's go over here to rebounds. I posted some stuff on rebounds today on Twitter. Nine and a half for Brianna Stewart, more rebounds versus Connecticut. Connecticut is stingy when it comes to giving up rebounds. I believe they're ranked fourth in rebounds allowed, meaning they don't give up too many rebounds. But Brianna Stewart, she hasn't been grabbing a lot of boards in the last game versus the Washington Mystics but check this out 11 14 13 9 her range of outcomes is going to be between 7 to 14 anywhere between there i will not be surprised if this line bumps up to 10 folks i won't even blink because i think it's going to move 10 so i'm already going to be getting it at more this is a inflated line i'm buying low and i am getting it while it is here and that is that sabrina she was at six and a half okay she was at six and a half the last couple times i've posted multiple contests with her under six and a half she's been cashing them for us now she's at five and a half okay she was at six and a half six and a half six and a half cash 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 all the cash they finally bumped her down to five and a half now i'm gonna talk
talk about both sides, okay? I told people in my community to take less on five and a half for two reasons. One, because I will ride that train till I'm forced off and you can only use the ride that train logic, the captain's train logic, if you will. That can only be used when you've been taking that particular player, uh, that particular stat, and it's been cashing for you time after time and you're already up a lot of money on it. So that when I say take it until you're forced off, it means if you've already been cashing in on it, then you'd want to stay on the train. So with that logic being said, you could take less at five and a half for that reason alone. But if you've never been taking her under at six and a half and she hasn't been making you money, that logic does not apply. To, okay. It does not apply. That's very important. Okay. So since her line is at five and a half, you could take more since it's a buy low candidate already out of the gate. I'm telling you right now, you could see her getting six. The range of outcomes is four to six. The reason I told my community to take less is because we'll ride that train. Number one, we've been cashing on the unders. I've been on her unders. Ask them. Then we have Brianna Stewart more. So I don't want Stewart and uh, Sabrina in my same contest correlating against each other. Because if I have both of these two competing for rebounds, uh, they will be competing for rebounds on the court, obviously, but I don't want them competing in my slip. I want one of them, one of them to do better than the other one. So I don't want that negative correlation. Okay. Also, Connecticut gives up the fourth, le fourth least amount of rebounds per game, as I said. So this is why I would do this. I believe this correlates well. If Sabrina's not grabbing rebounds, Stewart probably is and vice versa. Okay. But I make arguments for both sides of the coin. You're buying low if you do decide to take more. But if you do, I would take out Stewart and just leave Sabrina in there at more. I don't hate either one. That's up to you. Like I always say, can't argue both sides, then you're doing it wrong. John Quell Jones, seven and a half. We've been riding that. They finally bumped her up all the way to seven and a half. I believe she was at, I believe she was at seven or something like that. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Don't quote me. I'll have to check, but I didn't take her there. I took her points and her fantasy score. I know a lot of people are going to see these last four green beans and they're going to say, Hey Cap, what do you think about that? Look at all the green. It's green beans as fuzzy would say he loves his green beans cooking it up in the pot but not today for me i don't have a read on it one way or the other Alyssa thomas whoo 10 and a half rebounds what's up girl triple double she is the joker of wnba or so they say i'm i'm not buying it but we will talk about her nafisa call you my oh my eight and a half rebounds now either my model's completely broken or this line is mismatched i have her going for pretty much 11 to 12 rebounds today and she's at eight and a half eight and a half look at this she hasn't been getting okay against connecticut the the stingiest team one of the stingiest teams giving up rebounds she only got seven okay against the the sparks she got 14 she crushed but they're the sparks then she played the aces only got seven then she played the sparks again six and nine point is rebounds they're very volatile sometimes the player just has rebounds fall into their lap when you have more on that you love it yesterday we had Aaliyah boston more eight and a half and guess what she got like 14 but the day before we had Aaliyah boston under nine and she cashed that's how this works folks day to day everything's different matchups are different lines are different values different but we dig in that dumpster claw dig throw away the trash and we find the gems and when we can and i believe this is a gem if i'm wrong i'm wrong and if she sells then she sells but i am willing to take that chance i am going to trust my model trust my gut trust the matchup and i think she's due a big game also i had her going for like 50 fantasy points which is absurd that's a lot of fantasy fantasy points in the WNBA. So I took her more and whatever happens, happens. I'll live with folk. That's how it is. Yesterday I crushed WNBA. So if I come out here today and just get obliterated, that's, <laughs> I, I have to live with it. I go with my, I go with my read. Satal Sabali. Folks, what can we say? She was at nine and a half. I I literally took her more at nine and a half. I went against my own model. My model said not to do it. My model did wanted me taking under. The Vegas odds wanted me taking under. But here's the thing. She played Phoenix twice already this season. She crushed them, okay? Phoenix is dead last in almost every metric, okay? On top of that, she's due a big game. She hasn't been getting a lot of rebounds. Look at this. She had three last time, 11 versus the Spark, four, seven against Seattle, and then she came through on the Sparks right there. But my point is, is that we're buying Buying low here. She was literally at 13. Re the prop line was 13 the other day, a couple days ago, a couple, like maybe a week or maybe a week and a half ago, 13 rebounds, which we took less on, but she's eight and a half on underdog. She's nine on prize picks. She was nine and a half uh, earlier today, which I took more on. It is what it is. I literally told my community, my discord community, I said, wait until it drops to nine because the people are going to look at this, the last five, they're going to take the under and it's going to influence the line movement. Wait till you get it at nine. 
side. But like I always do, I'm making arguments for each side, folks. This is why I, I want you guys to be able to come to my channel and not just come here and look at what I like or look at what the picks are. I want you guys to hear both sides of the argument because that is how to become better at this. And I hope I can get your respect for that. If you don't like it and you don't and you don't want that, I totally get that. I understand. But I'm telling you, if you just open your mind up to this idea of being able to argue both sides of the coin here, it will help you out. It's always better to know what your opponent is arguing as well as what you believe. It, it should sharpen your own stance, but also gives you ammunition to be able to uh, look at the other side. You understand what I'm saying? Both sides are always going to need to be discussed, especially in this situation when we're on a 50-50 a proposition. So you have push equity taking more, but like I said, my model, my personal model that I always usually trust doesn't like it. The Vegas odds don't like it. So I know a lot of people are going to take less. I understand it. I, I, I have a gut read here and I'm going with more. And like I always say, I'm prepared to eat chalk. If she chalk, she chalks. I will eat chalk. It's fine. Brittany Griner, less than six and a half rebounds. I believe this was being favored on the DG optimizer that I use, which is also a good tool. I will show you that real quick. This is what that does. It gives you basically the books. It calculates the no vig for all these books and then gives you the hit percentage based on that. It's a easy, convenient tool that will literally give you all the sports books lines right here in one easy color coordinated, color coordinated, easy to use application. This is on the desktop app. It's very nice. If you want, if you're interested in it, DG Fantasy, use promo code CRUSH, or you can just click the link in the description. But Brittany Griner, less than six and a half rebounds was on there earlier. So I'm tar I'm throwing that in here for you guys. Now let's talk about some fantasy scores, folks. Alyssa Thomas, 45 and a half fantasy score. But wait, I'm going to go to my handy dandy notepad a la Blue's Clue, and I'm going to see what the fantasy point per minute is that I have wrote down. Okay, I got Alyssa Thomas, 1.4 fantasy points per minute. She plays literally 35 to 34 minutes. Let's go ahead and check out the calculator. Do we have time? Yeah, we got time. I'll do it. Okay, actually, I did the time. I did the math. I've done this before, but I forgot what it was. I did. I do this off show, and then I, I come on here, and sometimes I do it live. I usually do it for NBA because more people understand it, but 1.4 times 35 equals 49, so you know automatically her fantasy point per minutes 1.5 if she plays 35 minutes she's going to get 49 fantasy points on average again that's just an average but i will be taking more here because she's been playing absolute beast mode as of late look at that 50 fantasy points she had a stinker 56 55 50 so her floor is probably going to be around 30 to 35 and her ceiling is clearly 55 so we've been on this we were on her first half fantasy score the other day me and my community if you want to go back to her first half fantasy score and take more instead of the full game you want 100% can and I will not begrudge you a bit and you want to know a good little run back a little 1v1 stack if you will Brianna Stewart 45 fantasy points she's another one she's on a deflated line 31 40 57 47 61 absolutely deflated I can't remember the last time I've seen her fantasy score prop so low at 45 I will absolutely roll my dice and take my chances and if she sells me she sells me she's averaging 1.5 fantasy points per minute I just did the math on Alyssa Thomas 1.4 gave us 49 so we automatically know that 1.5 is gonna give us even more bang it's that simple I like it I love it I like the 1v1 y'all know where I'm going with that if you want to take it you can throw in a piece of call you're into that mix I had her projected for 50 fantasy points and she's at 43 like I said either my model is completely broken and I need to throw it in the trash just kidding I'll never get rid of my model it's, it made me countless countless winners but I will literally just take more here. And again, I hope and pray that Collier goes out there and does work because Captain needs new shoes. Ezzy Magabor, she was at 39 fantasy points the other day. 39, 38. Now she's all the way back down to 34 and a half. Now is the time you could hop on. There's another 1v1 stack. Collier and Magabor, if the game stays close and you have both mores, you're going to be feeling real good. Trust me on that. That's why you want your contest to correlate. You don't don't want to have five players going more or five players going under from the same team it's just bad correlation it's bad process and i ain't having it if you want to make
make Captain cry, that's what you would do, okay? And on that same note, you could throw Arike, Angumbawale, and Sabali in there. Bang, you could literally take both of these two, but they're on the same team, so you don't want to put them in the same contest, okay? That is a perfect example. I like both of these two to go more today, but you wouldn't want to put them in the same contest. You could literally do one and one or fade them both. At the end of the day, it's up to you. I want to talk about Diana Taurasi, okay? She is due a monster game. I don't know when it's coming. I don't know what's up with her. I know she has hamstring soreness or whatever. I'm not sure what the deal is. New coach, usually in NBA, when the players get new coaches, they want to come out and they want to crush. They want to prove who they are for the new coach. And sometimes they just want to play for the new coach and make him look or her, whichever him or her look good. So if you want to take a total dice, a total, you're shaking up the dice and you're like, bang, I want to get some action. Take Diana Taurasi, more 28 and a half fantasy points. I know a lot of people are going to be taken under. They're still not over the fact that she sold when she was the taco, but folks, that's your prerogative. Do what you want, okay? I'm pretty sure I covered everything here that I want to. I'm going to throw in one or two more. Alyssa Thomas' assist line is absolutely insanely high. Here's the thing. I took less when she played Minnesota and got there, but then the next game, her line was deflated and she went back to 12. This would be, on a normal situation, less would be the move. I'm fading the prop. I'm not going near it because she could literally come out and get 12 again, and I ain't trying to get burned by Miss Thomas. I will just take her fantasy score and hope for the best. Diana, same thing with her, less than five assists. Normally, this line, I would be taking more, but because of the recent events and because of how she's been and she's not 100% and she's going to need six to beat me, less would be the move that I take there. And then I believe there's points and rebounds I want to cover real quick. Yes, Collier, Sabali, and Ezzy. These are my three favorites for just points and rebounds. More, more, and more. Those are the ones that I would like, okay? And remember, normally I'm covering a lot of unders, but today I like a lot of mores. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me. If you want all the plays and stuff that I put out, because I do have some unders in there as well, you can join my dub club slash discord. It's the gold package. The link's in the description, folks. I sit there on live stage every day and teach my, my soldiers what's what. I let them answer questions. We build slips together. The whole nine yards. It's a pretty cool community if I do say so myself, and I'm not just saying that to say it because I'm trying to sell you something. I'm saying it because it's the truth. If you don't believe me, just ask them. And no, I don't pay anyone to say anything. They do it on their own accord. That is a fact. So now I want to rush over to underdog because I can't forget about my underdog family. Folks, I tell you guys all the time, we will be doing best ball on underdog very soon. Best ball golf, best ball NFL. And hopefully my equipment comes in so I can stream it live on YouTube for you guys. And I can get all the people hating on my draft picks or loving my draft picks via for NFL. Who just thinking about it gives me the tingles and goosebumps. I can't wait. It's going to be amazing. That being said, Ezzy Magabor, higher, 23 points rebound. Nafisa Collier, higher, eight and a half rebounds. Satow Sabali, look at this line. Look at the discount. Eight and a half rebounds, higher. Give it to me. Diana Tarasi, lower than five assists. And Brittany Griner, lower, six and a half rebounds. These are my favorite five folks. Want to take this full five? You absolutely put it in, insure it, put five dollars on it. What I wish you would do is take your own favorite two and go from there. This is a pick em contest. You want to get on underdog. You're not on underdog yet. You're like, Captain, what's underdog? Use promo code CRUSH. You'll get your full match, obviously. But on top of that, you'll get, again, 30 days from the captain himself. 30 free days into the gold disc. All right? Can't beat it with a stick. And now we've come to the end of the video, folks. Here it is, right here, the end. I appreciate you guys for sticking around and listen to me ramble about these nonsensical props that at the end of the day, in the grand scheme of life, they mean absolutely nothing. It's all for entertainment and all to make our lives a little bit more enjoyable. I appreciate each and every one of you guys for tuning in to me. Trust me when I say this. It means the world to me. Whether you like me, dislike me, hate my props, love my props, whether I've made you money, cost you money, whichever, I love you all equally, some more than others, if I do say much so myself my my boy fuzzy my boy wanna i got one on e under each arm boys and shout out to neek black jesus houston sometimes houston let's be real and then the rest of you guys that help me out on a daily basis most of you guys have roles in the discord i appreciate all you guys for helping me out trust i do the only time i'll tell you trust right there
here. You guys, you make my life a little bit easier, and for that, I appreciate it. If you're interested in Outlier Bet, you can get the lines, the spreads, the over-unders. Yesterday, the under on that Aces game, it cashed money, baby, and that was a good value town bet. So you can see the spreads. It's four and a half, three and a half, and three and a half. That's why captains all over the more today. Let's hope we get good games. No blowouts. Please, God, no blowouts. I give everyone a salute, and as always, let's crush.